Vision Strikers were the Korean team with a 102 game unbeaten streak. They won every match they played and seemed completely unstoppable. That was until a team of streamers came along and ended their streak in dramatic fashion. Two overtime maps led to F4Q toppling the unbeatable Vision Strikers. From streamers to God Slayers, F4Q, you were here, you witnessed the end of a dynasty! It was a monumental victory and one of the first major upsets in Valorant history. With the premiere beta going on and the official mode to release soon, now is the time to start grinding Valorant and focusing on really improving your game. But just playing deathmatch constantly won't help, you need to pinpoint your weaknesses. And one of the best tools for that is Valorant Tracker. You can see your real time stats in game, like your KDA, headshot percentage and your best and worst maps. You probably already check your stats online, so you might as well install Valorant Tracker for free with the link in the description so you can see the stats in game instead. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it. Remember when Sentinels were good? I know it's hard, but remember that tournament they won Masters Reykjavik? Well that was the first international tournament in Valorant, which meant cross-regional matchups for the first time. And the one that was hyped up the most was of course NA vs EU. Sentinels vs Fnatic was an example of that, but it wasn't the first time it happened. That would be version 1 vs Team Liquid. Team Liquid were the first seed from Europe, looking dominant in their region, and V1 were the second seed from NA, barely making it to Reykjavik with a lower bracket run. Not only that, but many expected EU to be dominant at the first major with their strong roots in Counter-Strike, and so Liquid were the overwhelming favourites in this matchup. But to much sadness from EU fans, it wouldn't come nearly as easily as they thought. On map 1, Liquid were up 10-5, but V1 managed to make the comeback to bring it to overtime. Liquid still won that map, but it was a different story on Ascent, which went to V1 and also on Haven. A 13-4 dismantling from V1, with this iconic fail from Solkas. Does he decide to go for this now? <gasps> Delete, oh, the, no. game. Delete oh, the game. No. Delete the game. Delete the game. Production the VOD. Let's jump to champions now, and the first upset there that broke the Valorant community. Crew were the sole representative of Latin America at champions, and hadn't really done anything at international tournaments before. And in a group with Liquid and Sentinels, they weren't expected to do anything significant this time either. They lost 2-0 to Liquid in their first match, and edged a win against Furia to set up a game against Sentinels. Whoever won, went to playoffs. When I say Sentinels were the overwhelming favourite in this game, I mean the result was pretty much assumed by the entire community. Add to that the fact that Zoms called Brazil a shit region a few days prior, Sentinels couldn't really lose to a Latin American team after that. Except, they could. Sentinels were not in the best of form at Champions, slowly declining after their trophy win earlier in the year. They'd just lost to a Liquid team they would have had no trouble with previously, and so there were some who predicted the upset against Crew. It didn't look likely after Sen took map 1, 13-7 though, and then went up 8-4 at the half on Haven. Sideshow, so please say this map is over. I've already said it. I've already said it. I don't give a shit if Crew win this pistol. Sentinel's defense is too good to lose this map. Okay, so they dropped Haven. Not a problem though, Sentinels were great on split, and went up 8-4 again on attack. Oh, it's, oh, it's done! Oh, it's oh, over! It's it's call it! Possible. It's Eight fucking over! It's oh, yeah. With the guy! Oh, 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 He's vulnerable! They put two in the end! It's actually over! It's fucking over! Let's fucking go! I can't believe it! This was an insane upset, with a minor region team knocking out one of the crowd favourites in the group stages. Crew weren't that known before champions, but they were definitely known after. With that upset against Sentinels, a win in the first round of playoffs versus Fnatic, and a banger game against Gambit, it was a lesson to the world that minor regions were not to be underestimated. And only a day later, we had another huge upset. NV came into the tournament as the runners-up from Masters Berlin, losing to Gambit in the finals. They were one of the favourites to take the entire tournament, let alone make it to the playoffs. After beating X10 and a close loss to Ascend, they faced an elimination game to make it to the final eight. That game was a rematch against the X10 team they'd already 2-0'd, so it should have been a trivial win for Envy. But you can never write a team off in Valorant. X10 were an explosive team who had built momentum after a win against Fibo Key, with explosive duelists in Patipan and Sushi Boys. The match was tense, but after Envy won the first map and went up 5-0 on split, it looked to be over. But X10 bounced back, winning 13 of the next 16 rounds to take split. Haven was the decider, but after a 9-3 first half for Envy, it pretty much sealed it. This game is over. Give up on your copium. Oh, this <laughs> Southeast Asia is done. 
Oh, he's getting bogged so fucking hard. Oh my god. Raft is good. Crashies is online. They have the great weapons. It's a great oh my god. It's a great bogging. What a play by Marv. Oh, it's actually good. 9 3. There's no curse. They only need three. It's over. Envy are through. Three. But like I said before, you can never count a team out, especially with that fated scoreline. Oh, I call him yeah because it's tight. Oh, let's fucking go! My just play tight. God, lovely C split. C -split. Oh, lovely C split. Paddy's Gorgeous C split. Wait, what? Paddy, oh, no, he's no, so no, Where's Ye? Where is Zorn? Oh, oh, no way! And even after Envy rebranded to Optic and X10 to Zersha, the legend of this upset continued through to Masters Reykjavik, where despite winning the whole event, Optic got upset again in their first match of the tournament by the same team. Forget Optic vs Loud, Optic vs Zersha was the real rivalry here. But we can't talk about Masters Reykjavik without mentioning the kings of upsets, Zeta Division at Reykjavik, the team who nobody thought would make it anywhere close to third place, and yet they did. The upset that summarizes their entire run is the game in the lower bracket against DRX, which was arguably the most shocking upset in Valorant history. But what made it that? Well, it was for a few reasons. The first being their underwhelming performance at previous events, and the lack of results for any Japanese team in Valorant before this point. The entire region had only ever won three maps across all international tournaments. Simply put, they weren't that good. That seemed to be the case again at Reykjavik, where Zeta played DRX in the first match of the event. 0-2, 2-13, 3-13. They were absolutely destroyed. And it wasn't unexpected. The general community opinion on this team was that they were categorically the worst team at the event. But this wasn't quite true, as they managed to make it out of groups with a win over a weakened Fnatic and a very close game versus NIP. But these were kind of upsets in themselves, so there wasn't much hope for Zeta in the playoffs. They immediately lost the G2, but then won over Liquid in another upset, capturing hearts across the world and creating a new, slower playstyle that caught teams off guard but their next game would surely be their last. A rematch against DRX, who had just narrowly lost to the future champions in Optic, the team that 2 owed them in completely dominant fashion just days before. Could Zeta really win and keep the dream alive? Not gonna be particularly easy though. That's huge, that's huge! Beautiful from Crow! Down in combination! But look at the luck and look at who it is. It's last, but the other two still need to keep them entertained. Crow and Shaka Zero have to sell them a story, sell them a tale! And Zeta! Where has this performance come from? This story, because Crow's on the back lines, right? He can deliver from the back, but it's still Buzz standing. And Buzz, Buzz. is unrelenting, unmoving for DRX. Sugar Zero, what can you do here? This is what you can it's do! Gonna... Oh my oh. god, Sugar Zero, you are unreal! You find a bit of form in the moments that call to it, but Laz still waiting. And Crow on the site. Get the cards close to the chest. The right click doesn't do it. But Zess will show him how it's done as Laz now the 1v2. That's good enough to at least buy a little bit of time, chip away. He still has to check on it. Oh my and god! He's done it, Laz! Well, they didn't only win, but clinched a 13-4 on the final map and a top four finish at Masters Reykjavik, with the biggest upset in Valorant to date. It was incredible to watch, and so many people across the world fell in love with this team and Japanese Valorant as a result. Nice. Champs 2022 didn't have too many upsets, with most of the favourite teams making deep tournament runs. There is a game that stands out though, Upper Groups Xset vs FPX. FPX were the current world champions after winning Masters Copenhagen, and Xset bombed out of that very same tournament losing both games and looking underwhelming. But as it turned out, Xset had gained loads of confidence from that tournament, and FPX were doing their classic let's not win until we have to strategy, and that led to Xset taking the match against the world champions. They went on to lose the rematch in the playoffs in incredibly close fashion with the whole turret incident, marking their exit from the tournament, but props to them for making the upset in the group stage. 2023 marked the start of Valorant franchising, and the first tournament of this era was VCT lock-in. Despite its controversial single ELIM format, there weren't too many notable upsets in Sao Paulo, but the one that stands out was the first round match between Team Secret and Liquid. 
Liquid were coming in with a powerhouse roster, including the new signings of Nats, Redgar and Safe. Expectations for Team Secret were low, considering they hadn't changed many players since their 2021 squad, and didn't look too great in the Pacific off-season tournaments leading up to lock-in. But by the time the two teams faced off, Secret completely took over the match, not giving Liquid a single chance. Even if Liquid had a chance though, it didn't seem like they would have taken it, they looked flat and uninspiring as a team, which Secret punished effectively. Jesse Vash even managed to get this knife kill. He's, Does he read this dead. lurk at all? No. He drops no. down. Vash, no way! Certainly not! Oh, Jesse Vash, you cannot so do this to the man! Not so Unbelievable! Not again! And that's Please just a so GG fast. go next! There's oh. no coming back from that! And so lock-in finished and the teams returned to their regions to play in the international leagues. In an eight-week season, we were bound to see some major upsets, and the first came in VCT Americas. NRG was touted as one of the favourites coming in, with the core of Optic and a great showing at lock-in. In week three, they faced off against MIBR, a team at the other end of prospective tier list for Americas. They clearly had good individual players, but not the level of team play to match NRG. Well, unless NRG are trolling with their roles and putting three different players on Killjoy in three different maps, but that would never happen, right? NRG were experimenting with their roles, probably expecting to be MIBR regardless, but it seemed that every Brazilian player was having a life game that day. A 13-10 win for MIBR and Icebox made the upset seem possible, and two 16-14s capped off an incredible series to watch and the first major upset of the VCT International Leagues, with MIBR taking it 2-1. And that brings us to the most recent major upset in Valorant as of posting this video, again from Team Secret. DRX almost never lose domestically, and went undefeated barring this game, so nobody really expected this to go the way of Team Secret. Biggest retake of the year for DRX right now to run. avoid getting shut down, and it's oh, the man. lockdown down, making everything much more difficult. They gotta get in, that's gonna be Jesse, clears it out, but Jesse is underneath this, he's trying to pick up a gun, but it's Jesse who's going to shoot him down with the shorty. It's all too real as 13 to 11 will be the scoreline. Team Secret 2-0 DRX tonight. Laban Pinas, let's go boys. So those are all of the major upsets in Valorant so far. I hope you enjoyed taking a look back at them. I know I did. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video and tune in again for more Valorant stuff. See ya.